Good afternoon. I am Adrienne Goolsby, CEO of the Richmond Redevelopment and Housing Authority. And on behalf of RRHA and RRHA's Board of Commissioners, I'd like to welcome all of you to this most monumental and community transforming occasion, the grand opening of the initial phases of the city's newest mixed income redevelopment effort, Highland Grove. I'd like to welcome all of the participants today from whom you will hear throughout the program. Today's speakers include Mayor Dwight Jones, Councilwoman Ellen Robertson. We are awaiting the arrival of Deputy Secretary of the U.S. Department of HUD, Maurice, Maurice Jones, as well as our partners, the Virginia Housing Development Authority, Bank of America, and the master developer, Laurel Street Residential. I'm also excited to announce that we'll also hear from a current resident and a Section 3 business owner of this new dynamic community. As some of you know, Section 3 is a HUD program that creates economic opportunities for residents, businesses, and the entire community throughout this city. One would say, what is revitalization? What does it mean? Dr. Benjamin E. Mays captures my idea of revitalization in one thought. Whatever one touches, his aim should always be to leave that which he touches better than he found it. The development of Highland Grove has been a long collaborative effort that we are excited to see come to fruition. Take a look around. See the transformation before your eyes that's springing beautifully from the ground. We see the well-designed and attractive apartments, the picturesque landscape, with future phases to include single-family homes, for sale homes, and a new park and a school. But I'm not just simply talking about the bricks and mortar that's springing about. We're talking about springing up access to opportunities and resources, not just for some, but for everyone. I'm talking about the hope and the optimism for our children, families, and the escalation in economic attainment, educational achievement, and positive health outcomes for this community. I'm talking about an increase in the understanding and connection between people, families, and children from different cultures and economic backgrounds. Our goal is simplistic, less isolation of poverty and greater integration of resources and opportunity for victory. Highland Grove is a stellar example of just that. And we are proud to have this community redevelopment effort taking place in this great city. Now this effort could not have been possible without the partnership and collaboration of many of you here in this audience. Without the extraordinary team effort of our city leaders, partners, master developer, and community, we could not have reached this place where we all sit and stand together today, celebrating a major breakthrough of turning blight into brightness and injecting life and opportunity back into our community once again. Last but not least, I'd like to thank the Section 3 companies and minority and women-owned businesses that helped make this effort a success. Along with celebrating the grand opening of this new community, we also celebrate the stellar accomplishments of, of the participation goals of MWBE and Section 3 businesses, doubling those goals while providing employment opportunities for all our residents. Again, I would like to thank you for the role that you play, and we appreciate the role that you will continue to play in this epic effort. So now I would like to welcome Mayor Dwight Jones, who has been instrumental in supporting and enhancing this collective vision 
for community transformation. His great leadership on this effort has certainly helped bring to us today what we gather and success to look at a new revitalized community. We are so very thankful for the role that he continues to play in building a better Richmond, in building a better city, and in revitalizing our communities. Following the mayor, each speaker will come forward as they are listed on your programs. And could we take a moment to welcome Mayor Jones to the podium. Well, good afternoon and thank you, Adrian. And if you had anything to do with making sure we had a tent and some heat, I especially want to thank you for uh, some good planning. Uh, this is a great day for the city of Richmond, and I'm delighted to be here with all of uh, our partners in getting this job done. I want to recognize the presence of Kathy Graziano from City Council. I saw her somewhere. You usually clap when you. Uh, <laughs> glad she's here and uh, also uh, I have to say <clears throat> that the vision for these types of projects comes uh, from persons who dedicate their lives and much of their time uh, to the betterment of our community and of course there are those uh, administrators <clears throat> and persons who uh, are private uh, entrepreneurial uh, entities that work with us and our partners in the state, uh, but without, without a vision, we perish. And so it's important for us to recognize that. And so I want to recognize Ellen Robertson, the councilwoman from this district. She has been a driving force uh, in making this happen today. And uh, when she gets a hold of something, she doesn't let it go. So we want to recognize Ellen Robertson today for her work. And you can't appreciate how great this day is unless you have uh, some memory of Dove Court or unless you have some memory of Carrington Gardens. And I see Reverend Todd Gray here from Fifth Street Church and others from the community. And uh, they will say that this is a great day because this doesn't look anything like it used to look. And it is very important for us to recognize the importance of this. I want to commend uh, this project for the minority women uh, and Section 3 participation. That's very important to my administration, and we believe that the promotion of local businesses and direct local involvement and employment is key to uh, working with poverty or trying to mitigate poverty in our city. The initial predictions for this community are good. Uh, we understand that we expect to be fully leased by January, and uh, we are very pleased with some of the amenities that are going into these buildings. Bottom line is, and you have a lot of speakers, and so let me just cut mine short so you can listen to the other folks, but the bottom line is that concentrating poverty was a bad idea 50 years ago, and it's a bad idea now. Amen. We've got to find a way. I like you saying amen, dear. <laughs> Don't say it too much, I'll take a test. <laughs> but it's a bad idea now. The idea that you can put all people together of a certain strata, uh, particularly people who are living in the poverty, and expect them to succeed is a fundamentally flawed idea. And so here in Richmond, we have come to the conclusion that we have got to decentralize poverty. We've got to find a way to develop mixed income, affordable housing for persons so that the successes of the city are not just for a few people, but the successes of the city are for all of the people who live in the city of Richmond. And we are committed to that. Because at the end of the day, fundamentally, all of us want the same things. I don't care whether you're rich or poor. All of us want a good place to live, a safe neighborhood, good schools for our children and an opportunity to do better than our mothers and fathers did. And I believe that we're on the road to getting that done here at Highland Grove, and this is the beginning of great things that are to come. And so I want to say thank you to all of those who are involved in getting us to this point, and we look forward to the complete building out 
uh, of this community. And uh, we look forward to a great community with of mixed income housing, with great, excellent schools, and with a community center. That's what every community ought to have. Thank you so much. I want to say good morning. It feels like morning to me. It doesn't feel like afternoon. But it's afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Ellen Robertson, and I'm the council representative of this area. But more importantly, I am a resident of this community and have been for quite some time. And I am very grateful for this wonderful transformation of what has taken place here. I want to thank Adrian Good for her leadership at the Rich and Redevelopment Housing Authority and certainly the board of directors there. Uh, Mayor Jones, uh, for your dedication and commitment to community development, and not just downtown. Uh, you've done a fabulous job at reaching out to our communities with the greatest need and making them a high priority for the city of Richmond. And I want to recognize other officials and uh, leaders here that have been working with us in the city of Richmond to make things different for quite some time. Uh, this is like, like the mayor said, this is a very special project for me. Uh, I'm probably more nervous than anyone else here today because um, I've been on the ground in this community for quite some time doing work for a very, very long time to try to bring about change, but I have not done this by myself. Uh, I've had some exceptionally strong partners throughout this process, and certainly the residents of this community are really the backbone of what makes happen, what makes things happen in this community. Uh, since the late 1980s to the early 1990s, uh, this community rolled up their sleeves, dedicated a significant number of hours to really come to the table. They started out by forming a nonprofit organization that was 100% controlled by residents of the community. Um, out of that, a nonprofit organization was created uh, by the name of HP Rap. Uh, we got, we were called H. Rap Brown and a whole lot of other things. And, uh, and to say to F, Reverend F. Todd Gray, um, from the very beginning, Fifth Street has been a partner in this initiative. Uh, I remember when we first went to knock on his door and said, uh, we need some office space for our community development corporation. And uh, the pastor said, oh, sure, we've been working with the community. And uh, they said, you know, just tell me the name of the organization and what you all are doing. And I said, well, it's HP Rap. And they said, oh, no. <laughs> we ain't having no rap groups up in the church. <laughs> <laughs> so our clever idea of coming up with the name HP Rap was because we thought we would attract all the young people. Actually, what we did is we turned off a lot of partners that we really wanted at the table. But we made great success. We were one of the first organization in Holland Park. It's one of the first, is the first community in the city of Richmond that HUD community development block grant funds were used for down payment assistance for qualified home buyers. And we were the first organization to bring homeowners, moderate low income homeowners, to the city of Richmond using HUD funds. And so we are very proud of the long history. Following that process, of course, we moved into much more aggressive development opportunities. And this site, Dove, Carrington Gardens, and there was another uh, apartment complex here, and Matthew Heights right down the street were probably once the most greatest negative impediment to the success of development. Even though we had neighborhood in blooms, we had lots of other activities going on, we had very strong partners throughout the entire process, uh, these three sites were the greatest impediment and the greatest concentrated, uh, poorly managed, blighted, vacant, abandoned, housing in, in the neighborhood. And so with a lot of effort and a lot of support, always from the Richmond Redevelopment Housing Authority, uh, we were able to make that, bring those properties in control, 
have them demolished and have what you experience today, which is going to really be the cornerstone to the total revitalization of the community. So today we stand here with phase one and phase two. Uh, I've heard from lots of the community residents, some of our leaders in the community like Reverend Dr. Louise Kane that has been around for, who is my uh, mentor and who helped help me in the process of doing what I do today. Uh, and many others that have uh, actually been part of this process and some of the first time homeowners that are still standing and still living here today. And many of them are in the audience today. So if any of you that were a part of the uh, development, would you all stand up please, some of the new homeowners. Come on, Latasha. Um, yeah. So we, this has been, uh, has always been a very strong resident base. And so today we are celebrating phase one and phase two. Uh, that has been completed and as you've heard will be renovated up uh, within the next couple of months or so uh, but there's a lot more to come I want to also acknowledge uh, Charles Price who has been the I'm gonna use the uh, mayor's term what did you call it he called him a um, attack dog. dog thank you <laughs> With the Cannon Creek Greenway, uh, that is a support. <laughs> that is a support to this development, and he is also working, Mr. Mayor. I want to make sure you ride down through uh, Richmond Henrecker Turnpike before you leave. Uh, he's been working with the Sheriff Department. He has ten st student residents of the Justice Center that are uh, enrolled in a uh, career development experience. They have cleaned that ravine out like you would not believe it, I'm telling you. And they have also learned very effective skills in landscape development and so forth. And that is a pilot product project that he is managing and we intend to take it to a great level. We are, we are waiting and supporting, uh, waiting for and hopefully so with the uh, affirmative support of the Richmond School Board and the development of a new school here on this site as well. And we are hopeful that the school system may see fit that it will be a STEM school. A lot of those decisions are still in the process of being finalized and we're working very closely with the school board and, and to accomplish that as well as the community center, lots of green space and lots of other opportunities. But I wanna to say to the residents, our work is not done. If we don't move besides phase one and phase two, we've not built a community that was promised. And there is a lot of work yet to be done to move to the next level of the homeownership, the school, the additional parks, the completion of the Cannon Creek Greenway, and also providing townhouses and other workforce housing as well as the homeownership. So the battle is in full swing. Don't leave the battlefield. There's work that still be done. <coughs> And the rest of it, if you think this is beautiful, the rest of it is gonna be even grander. And so we've got a lot to look forward to and uh, I am grateful for all of our partners and thank you very much for joining us today. And I too would like to recognize the former president of Richmond City Council and one of my most dearest, high spirit, friendly, uh friend, Miss <laughs> Kathy <laughs> Miss Kathy Graciana. We won't tell all of our secrets. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm gonna go next while we're waiting for the Deputy Secretary of HUD. My name is Susan Dewey. I'm the Executive Director of the Virginia Housing Development Authority. And I know some of you are not familiar with VHDA. We've been around for 41 years, and our mission is strictly about helping to provide affordable housing throughout the state. That's both in first-time home buyer opportunities, as well as working with developers to make sure there are good rental opportunities throughout our state. You know, we have a, a wonderful mission, but we could not accomplish anything without the help of partners at various levels. I know that our, our, our senator, 
Kane was supposed to be here with us today, and you've probably been reading, there's a little bit of stuff going on in D.C., and he was not able to be here, but we had a great opportunity to work with both uh, Senator Kane as well as Senator Warner when they were governors in Virginia on our affordable housing mission, and still are. We're very excited that Maurice Jones is now the Deputy Secretary of HUD. He is uh, a wonder to work with. We had the opportunity to work with him during Senator Warner, then Governor Warner's administration, and we ha it's like a breath of fresh air because he understands all about what we do, both on a business level as well as a mission level. But we can't do it without our local partners as well. And I think you can see already how important it is to be here today with the mayor, Mayor Jones, as well as Councilwoman Gaziano and Robertson. I had the pleasure of working with Ellen on the DHCD board, one of our partner housing agencies. And without their support to get things done, we could not accomplish these types of things such as Highland Grove. So we really do thank you for your leadership. We don't see that in all areas of the state. It also takes our development partners, and I know you're going to hear later from Dion Nelson, who's the CEO with Laurel Street Residential, but they're really the ones that sweat it out on the ground day to day, that stay up uh, all night wondering if it's going to rain or not for the grand opening, but, you know, Dion, there are no clouds in here today. It's, it's all good. And then also, um, I wanted to recognize the financial partners, Bank of America, Redstone Equity Partners, and I want to particularly give a shout out to Richmond Redevelopment and Housing, and I'm really grateful for the leadership with Adrian is new to our area, but she hit the ground running, so we're very, very pleased to be working with you. And I'm here today with um, my colleague at VHDA, Jim Chandler, who runs a tax credit program as well as uh, Brian Matz here. That's our role in this particular development, and that is through our allocation of the tax credits. These are federal tax credits. Unfortunately, the name is the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program. I wish we could change that. But it really is a wonderful tool for us to have equity provided into our rental affordable housing developments. And in this case, it's used alongside other types of financing so that we can provide mixed income for the people that will be living in Highland Grove. Right now, this is truly a great example of all the things that we're trying to accomplish with Governor McDonald's housing policy. It encompasses mixed income or deconcentration of poverty and lower income, certainly revitalization, having an opportunity for people to live near major employment centers, affordability for our working families, Green building, this is an Earthcraft certified development, so it is energy efficient. Also, property management, I want to give a shout out also to SL Nussbaum, who has achieved a certification from us for their success in strong property management, which is so important. It's not only about building something nice, it's about keeping something nice. All of that leads up to truly community transformation and that's what we're able to witness today that's what's so important we can thank all of our partners today for what they're doing but ultimately it's a celebration for the people that will live here for many many years to come so thank you for letting VHDA be a partner in this celebration I have to remark that my good friend I just met uh, Judy here just made a comment about uh, you must be the banker in the room because of my suit. And I, I, I said, yes, how could you tell? I just flew in from California last night. I looked in my closet this morning, and this was the only suit I had that was clean. And I said, but I'm wearing it for a special occasion. So, it's, uh, so I'm proud to be here, Judy. Thank you for recognizing that. Fact. She also reminded me she used to be a teammate of ours at Bank of America, so I appreciate your service there as well. Now she's off to business, better, better things in terms of small business, and so ex excited, very excited for me to meet you as well in terms of what you're doing with your business. So uh, on behalf of Bank of America, good, good afternoon. My name is Gary Gore. I'm pleased to serve as not only the Richmond, but the uh, Virginia State President for Bank of America. And on behalf 
of our team here in Richmond and our community development banking partners, of which Angela Hill or Darren Swanson are in the back. These are my partners from the community development banking, so thank you for joining uh, me this afternoon as well. I want to echo the other speakers here today and thank you for allowing us to celebrate this grand opening of this great new development. Bank of America is very excited about everything Highland Grove will offer its residents. This redevelopment of Carrington Gardens, Northridge Apartments, and Dove Court will provide 128 of high quality housing in its first phases and it will truly help to revitalize the Dove Street area. We're thrilled that Bank of America was able to support this terrific development through $10.7 million in construction loans. Highland Grove fits perfectly with our community development banking mission, which is dedicated to meeting the needs of local communities and helping create positive impacts in neighborhoods where we live, work, and play. As you may know, Bank of America is one of the nation's largest most active affordable housing lenders, providing financing for more than 114,000 units over the past eight years. Projects such as Highland Grove are a key part of Bank of America's 10-year, $1.5 trillion community development lending and investing goal. In the first four years of that effort, we provided more than 18 billion 18 billion in lending and investing in Virginia, with more than 16 billion going to support affordable housing. That includes 1.9 billion for affordable housing right here in the Richmond area. That we're very proud. Bank of America's community support also, support also extends to other areas. We continue to provide new credit that allows Virginia's small businesses to grow. Many of them are here today, so it's great that the small businesses are present. In addition, the Bank of America Charitable Foundation helps local not-for-profit organizations follow through on their missions, including providing basic services such as hunger, relief, and housing assistance. Our employees frequently contribute to local charitable organizations with their gifts being matched by our charitable foundation. And you may have also seen the many, many team members volunteering right here in our community. So, Howling Grove is just another example of this commitment to the community. And congratulations to Laurel, Laurel Street Residential, the Richmond Redevelopment Housing Authority, the City of Richmond, and all of the terrific partners who've helped make this development a reality. Each of your contributions was essential to the success of this project, and on, Bank of, and on behalf of Bank of America, we're proud to be part of that. So thank you again for your vision and your leadership. It's great to be with you this afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Gotta get my skirt. <laughs> First, giving honor to God. And mm, I would like to thank everybody for this opportunity to be here this morning to tell my story. This afternoon to tell my story. My mother owned the cleaning business while I was growing up. She taught my sister and I, at the age of seven, the down-home style cleaning, which is known as deep cleaning. Little did I know that this was a legacy given to me by my mother. Years later, while taking care of my great aunt, I prayed about my future plans in cleaning came into my spirit, along with the skills that I obtained from my mother's cleaning business. I knew that this would be a right path for me. I've always enjoyed cleaning, which became a passion. And I began to put that vision that God had given me into action. I started my business in 2005 and received the certification of Section 3 business in February of 2012. The certificate was given to me, giving me the ability to give back and to employ low-income individuals. 
you know, I didn't want to return to this area. You see, 20 years ago, my oldest brother lived here and died here in Dove Court. And I swore I would never return here. However, I'm excited about the new development and cleanup in this area. And um, thank you all for cleaning this area up. I can see a positive change being made. Wow. Who would have thought by passing out my business card two years ago, I would, I would, it would lead to my first opportunity to perform a construction cleanup. Now, with this experience, my company is now in a position to pursue similar contracts in the future. Recently, my company was awarded contracts through Richmond, Re was awarded, excuse me, was awarded two contracts with Richmond Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Amen. Amen. And I'm always looking for a new clients. So if anybody <laughs> interested, we can meet after the opening. <laughs> and um, I want to thank God, first of all, for this opportunity. And, um, and I want to thank my team, the guys that worked long beside me. It wouldn't be possible without them. And um, also my son, who quit his job to become my business partner and working beside me. And my dad is also employed through my company. Amen. And a special thanks for North South for this opportunity. And God bless you all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Tasha Burgo. I'm the superintendent for North South Constructs. We're the general contractors on this project. I'll give you a little bit of background about myself and how I became part of this project. I was laid off several years ago from DuPont Fibers and I was forced to move out of my home in Chesterfield and move into the Gilpin Court housing development. <laughs> you know, I decided to turn that negative into a positive, not let life beat me down. I signed up for Gilpin Court's Family Sufficiency Program and through those meetings I was told never to give up always pray hard and not let my circumstance determine my future. The best advice I was ever given, needless to say. Through that program, I was introduced to another city of Richmond program known as the Workforce Pipeline. Through that program, I was given opportunities for training and also given the opportunity to interview for North South, the company that I work for now. North South is a company that prides themselves on hiring Section 3 participants and giving second chances to folks like myself. Being in Port of North South has allowed me to witness this project from beginning to end, well, what would soon be the end. <laughs> it was exciting to see the transformation from Dove Court to Highland Grove. Being a resident of the city of Richmond, I've seen the best and I've also seen the worst. I know firsthand the quality these were built by because I work in the construction trailer and I deal with the day-to-day -day operations of this project. I was thrilled when given the opportunity to become a future resident of Highland Grove. It's beautiful, as you all can see. It's right next to the school. It's minutes from my mayor. <laughs> and most of all, it's affordable. I could go on and on, but I know that you guys would like to see it for yourself, and I could never do it as much justice as you could do it on your own. I'm excited to see what's next with my future opportunities with Section 3 employment, because again, this is ending. And I'll be a new resident at Highland Grove, and I also look forward to that as well. I'm sure both will be amazing. Thanks, everyone, for this opportunity. I couldn't have done it on my own. I couldn't have gotten the interview without RRHA and the Workforce Pipeline. So I greatly appreciate everybody. Thank you, guys, and God bless. Good afternoon. I think. Uh, I have the toughest act to follow, acts <laughs> plural. Um, I first want to say um, a special thank you to both Penny and Tasha um, for sharing their very personal stories. Um, uh, but I think people need to um, have an opportunity to understand more fully um, what we've tried to do here at Highland Grove over the last several 
uh, years, <coughs> frankly, as we've worked collectively with our partners at Richmond Redevelopment Housing Authority and the City of Richmond um, and VHDA and our financing partners in order to try to make this a success. Um, this is certainly hard work. Community re re revitalization, as Councilwoman Robertson uh, indicated, is hard and long work. Um, and sometimes when you get down in the throes of it, um, you start to lose sight. And I appreciate the opportunity to kind of hear the end of the story so that we also can be reminded why it's the right thing to do. And this is the most important thing about this work, is the people that we have an opportunity to affect, the lives that have an opportunity to be changed. Um, we at Laurel Street Residential believe that everyone deserves to have a high quality home that they can afford. We believe in mixed income housing and really bringing households of all income levels together in one community so we can together really drive forth to be the, the neighborhoods and the um, cities and the states that we aspire to be. Let me also do, there have been a lot of thank yous, but I need to do a little bit of cleanup work if you will let me borrow your term for a second. Um, first, I also want to go back to, the, to, to SL Nussbaum. Um, uh, Steve Boyce, Diane, Sue Hartley, um, all the folks that have been working, frankly, out of this leasing trailer um, for many months now um, as we prepare their new offices, which will be in this corner mixed use building, um, that it will be the last building that gets delivered. Hopefully, we'll, we'll give them a, a nice, welcoming, long-term space where they can serve this community. But they have really worked with the community to help folks understand how to gain access to the housing. And they will work with us long term to make sure that the property is maintained and really becomes a home to the individuals that choose to live with us. And so I want to say a special thank you there. Um, let me go back to Ms. Goolsby and the Richmond Redevelopment Housing Authority. She is a newcomer to um, this effort, but has made all the difference. I do want to say thank you for that. But also thank you to the RHA team, um, Matt Bolster, um, Valina, uh, Michelle, Ms. Doris, uh, Osita, Jeff, Stephanie. There's just a ton of folks that work day in and day out in the background to really help us get things done. And there are a lot of details in that regard. The city of Richmond as well, uh, Deputy CAO, uh, Mr. Marshall, and his entire team have really put forth countless hours. Um, be it Chris Beschler or Mark Olinger or all the folks that I could never name in terms of trying to help us make sure that we achieve all the requirements and objectives necessary in order to make this a reality. I also want to touch on um, VHDA. Yes, a lot of folks don't know VHDA by that name, uh, by that acronym. They may not understand the ins and the outs of the tax credit program, but I do want to say to Ms. Dewey that Jim Chandler and the tax credit program team um, do an outstanding job. Um, frankly, VHDA's program is one of the best run tax credit programs in the country. Um, they have gone out of their way to work with us to help sh make sure that we were meeting the requirements of the program, but most importantly, that we can make this community a reality and a success. Rob Vest and Redstone Equity, are they here? Yes. Um, Redstone Equity was the syndication firm that purchased the tax credits. Um, but Redstone Equity and Rob in particular has been a longstanding partner of Law Street Residential. They are a very collaborative team and have worked with us to make sure that, uh, that this can become true in, in terms of providing the, the true equity in the deal. Bank of America, Mr. Gore, thank you for all your team's work. Um, most of our contacts of Darren and the folks down in Charlotte um, but without the construction lending and the other permanent um, financing, then this, this work would not be a reality. We have, obviously, designers and a construction team. You've heard the name North South Constructs. Um, they have been the general contractor on the job. I want to thank them um, and their numerous superintendents and team members. And there have been times that we've had um, difficulty kind of moving the project forward, and they doubled down and tripled down their resources as was needed in order to keep us on track and continue to make sure that we could deliver units in a way that we, consistent with what we've promised to our families. But I also want to acknowledge the design teams, site design, Commonwealth architecture, Timmins engineering, um, for all their work to help us design a product that will live well into the long term. Most importantly, I want to also thank um, the community 
because without your commitment and support to wanting to see transformation here, to pushing the project forward, then it would be difficult to maintain the momentum to delivering this reality over the extended period of time that is required in order to deliver community revitalization. And last but not least, I certainly want to thank my team at Law Street Residential, Daryl Heminger, Kamina Brooks, Sue Moody, um, and a number of others have really worked day in and day out to try to help us get here. So with that, I want to say thank you to this group for willing to come out on such a cold and thank God not so rainy day at this point. Um, we appreciate your time and attention. Um, at this point, I'm going to ask that we conclude the formal part of our program. I'm going to ask that the speakers, if we would, please step out of the tent onto the steps of the unit to our immediate right, and we're going to do a quick ribbon cutting. Three, two, one. Yeah!